Okay, here we go. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is David Murphy, <clears throat> publisher of the National Black Unity News, a newspaper that is circulated nationwide. And the, um, and the theme of my publication is Bios and it's for us. And uh, we are uh, what you call, some are called the uh, um, solution-oriented publication. We are different from every other newspaper that's out there because the people that makes up this paper are all volunteers and they all invested into this publication. It's what we call a collaboration that will set us apart from everybody else because we are self-supporting. We don't depend on anybody but ourselves. But our purpose is to bring positive information to you, our listeners, our hearers, our viewers, and those who will see this video and on social network. So I encourage you to get a copy of the National Black Unity News. You can see it online as well as subscribe and have a publication sent directly to your home or office. With that being said, I'm bringing to you today one of our authors who's been with us for some time now. Her name is Lila Arthur. Uh, I, I'm going to share a little bit about her. You know, I met her several years ago. She's a bright young lady who full of life, do wonderful things for people. I met her. She was involved with this organization called Hugs, and she explained a little bit about that as we move on. But she also dealt with financial services, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about today. And uh, so I want to introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Lila Arthur. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm absolutely wonderful. And how are you today, David? Well, I'm here, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I hope to be here tomorrow too. But in any case, you know, um, Lila, um, like I say, you, you do a lot of great things and you work with a lot of people. You, you not only you do things socially, but you know, you have a couple of, you have a business as well as you do financial services. So mm -hmm. before we even get into those areas, I want people to know who who, who is Lila Arthur? You know, you ain't got to give me your whole lifestyle, but what, what makes you tick? Well, I am. One, I'm a mother, so um, that kind of makes me tick because um, I see other people's children out here, and um, being a mother is is a um, is dear to my heart to make sure things are in place for those children. Um, I am originally from New Jersey. I've been in Baltimore now 22 years, so people be like, "Oh yeah, you from Baltimore?" <laughs> I've been here so long. Um, love what I do. Um, basically, you know, helping people is, is the root of what makes me tick. I like to help people. So that's why I have a cleaning business because I like helping people with that. That's why I do finances because I like helping people with that. I want to make sure people are in the place that they want, that they need to be and that they're comfortable in. And um, just giving them, getting the information out there, letting them understand and knowing you know what's going on out here a lot of times we we end up where we are we do in life is because we just don't know you know so educating people teaching people um helping people that's what makes me tick i like to help okay since you like to help people um i know you mentioned a few things but you involved with this organization called hugs can you just explain a little bit what hugs do so the um, organization is called it's a nonprofit called hug don't shoot um, and what we do is we give a sense of peace to people um, one hug at a time. You'd be surprised at how many people out here has never had a hug or haven't had a hug in a long time since they was a child. So we go out and we give hugs. And even through the pandemic, when the pandemic started, we started just giving virtual hugs. So we would go out on the street corners and say, hey, can I, can I get a hug? You know, and people would smile. They'd be in their cars and they would light up and smile. They'd give us back a hug. Um, and that just helped so many people go on their day. People don't realize that some people are just one, one, you know, step away from committing suicide, one step away from, you know, they homelessness and, and just don't know where, where, to, where to turn. But that hug and that love that we're out there giving the people on the street is helping them, is, is helping them a lot. So we do a lot of things as far as like go out to, um, we, we attend funerals for, for children that was, you know, senseless mm -hmm. crimes. Um, we go to people's homes, you know, we do food pantries, um, we give away clothing, you know, just anything that's going to help the next person um, live a better life. That's great. You know, I read a story, uh, 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 I mean, uh, article years ago, and it was about babies, infant babies. 
and they mm -hmm. were saying that, um, and they did this little, how you know, test or something. And they say that babies that got hugged and was held did far more better than the children that, you know, they kind of set apart, you know, they fed them and everything, but they say the ones who, you know, they, their disposition turned out to be so much greater. So mm -hmm. there is significance to, as to what you just said. And uh, you also had this business that you were involved with. You know, you say you uh, spent a little bit on this business, not the uh, financial service, but the other business. So my other business is a cleaning business. So um, what I do is I do residential and I do um, commercial. Like, And so people sometimes be like, but do you like cleaning? I said, I actually do because I like the after fact. You know what I mean? When After I walk into somebody's house and they be like, oh, I need this, I need help with this, I need help with that. Because you figure there's a lot of single moms out here and then even two parent homes, they it's, it's hard for them to be able to go out to work every day and still keep up on the cleaning and stuff that they want done in their homes. So that's where I come in and say, okay, I got you. I'm, I'm going to help you. Um, so I come in and I clean. I do office buildings, buildings as well. I have some express cares that I do at, at night. Um, my children are involved in it. They help me. Um, I'm recently looking now for other people to start help because it's just growing so fast. But it's, 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 a, it's another way of helping somebody. So I love what I do. Um, started out doing that from a girlfriend. Um, mother needed me to help her. She had a cleaning business that needed me to help her. So I helped her and I said, hmm, I could do this. And then somebody else is like, I need you to help me. Hmm, I can do this. So it's, it's, it's growing. Um, now I'm, I'm looking to add food service to it. So people oh. like food service. It's like, yeah, so you figure you come in, you come home from work. Now, not only do you have your house clean, but you also have dinner prepared. Wow. That is like a blessing, right? That's a blessing. <laughs> All right. Yes, that is a blessing. You, you like I say, you got people running here and there and everywhere. And, and, mm. and it's a difficult task to, to really, especially making the milk and to clean the house, you know. So um, kudos on that because, like I say, that's a needed service. What about do you do things for like senior citizens? I do. Um, some, some see, I have a couple senior citizens that are my clients. Um, mm -hmm. So it just depends, you know, who calls me. Um, and people always say, well, how do you get your clients? Well, every client that I've had, somebody referred them. Oh, so okay. that tells me that I'm doing a good job because mm -hmm. I've never had to go out and look for a business for the cleaning business. Never had to look. It's always come, it has always come to me. I just got a phone call from a lady a couple of days ago who has um, all these Airbnbs and these urgent cares. And she was just like, I need you clean, you clean. I'm like, I don't even know where she got my name from, my number from. I was like, yes, yeah. so I went and looked at it. Now I done did three Airbnbs for her already in the last week and did another one today. And then now, and she's got the urgent care. So it's just, it just comes to me. So that's how I knew that that's my calling too, because it, I never had to look for it. It's always just come to me. Okay, now I want to get into uh, your financial service. This is one of the main things that I want, really wanted to talk to you about is because, um, you know, I've been around the block once or twice, and I do know that mm -hmm. people, especially in this day and time, is going through so much heartbreak and don't know how they're going to make it from day to day. Um, and, 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 of course, we know we're just coming off this, but we're still in the pandemic. People lost their jobs. The people don't want to go back to the job that they did have because, you know, it just wasn't making ends meet. And so people's in all kinds of crazy situations right now. And uh, and I've read several of your articles, and you have several ways that you can help people with, mm -hmm. with finances. And finances is, 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 is something that, you know, uh, from when I went to school, they didn't teach us about that, you know, anything. Right. So, so can you tell me what type of services you provide when they deal with finances? Sure. So, um, the first thing I do is um, we do I do life insurance. I'm a life I'm a licensed life insurance agent, um, and I also help people with fixed index annuities. And the next step is to help them with um, investments, um, 401ks, and uh, retirement plans and stuff like that and like you said that's a this information is something that we weren't taught to taught in the school system so what I do is I don't just sit down and say hey let me give you a quote for some life insurance I educate so I sit down with them and show them um, if they already have life insurance in place I go through their policy and say hey did you did you know this was in your policy did you know that and most people don't most people were sold a life insurance policy by an agent and they never open that policy back up 
And if they had opened it up, they still wouldn't understand mm -hmm. what to look for, right? So that's the difference in what I do and what other insurance agents do is I educate them because at the end of the day, I need them to understand exactly what they had and exactly what I'm offering them and let them make the decision whether or not they, they should move forward with me or stay where they're at. And, you know, and I give them the options and people say, well, you know, you know, I don't, I don't sell or, um, or uh, whole life insurance. And so pe most people, most people like us was always really taught to have whole life insurance. Mm -hmm. And I teach pe people like, well, I don't understand Lala. Why, why not whole life insurance? Right. Because most of us are not going to live past a hundred anyway. Right. You, you have a few people that live, live past a hundred, but at the end of the day, it's more important to make sure the people that you're leaving behind is you're leaving them behind with money, not $10,000, not $20,000, but you want to leave them a replacement. So we teach our clients to have income protection in place. And we've also showed them how to put themselves in a position to become self-insured. Hmm. See, insurance was never designed for us to pay for our whole life. It's only for a time period so we have enough money set aside to say I'm self-insured. Because think about it, David, if I walked in your house today, right? Mm -hmm. And you had a million dollars sitting in an account that when you passed, that that million dollars was gonna pay off your house. It was gonna take care of your grandkids. It was gonna leave your kids something. Would you need a life insurance policy? No, I don't think I would. <laughs> no. Exactly, you wouldn't because you would be considered self-insured. But most people that we know aren't in that position to be to say that I'm self-insured. So that's why they need the insurance in place. But why they have the insurance in place, they need to be putting themselves in a position to become self-insured. That is where the investment parts come in. So now we teach our clients to buy term and invest the difference. So you get a term policy for 30 years. But in that 30 years, we also are putting money aside into an investment and allowing it to grow. Now it's allowing our people to be able to not mm. only understand insurance, but also understand investments. Something again, that we weren't taught in the school system. You know, we got the market out here, but we most people don't understand how the market works. They just know that, oh, oh, it's a little, so I'm a little scared of going to the market. But if they understood it and they, they, um, they knew how, how to work it, we would be in a better position. We don't have money set aside because of that, because we just don't know. But that's where we come in. That's where I come in. I'm, I'm a, a coach, somebody that can come and finance, teach you finances and teach you how to put yourself in a position to not only, you know, live a good life, but retire a good life as well. You know what I mean? If you live to the point to you get to, um, to retirement, then you want to have money set aside to say, you know what? I, I, I can live and not have to go back to work because too many of our senior citizens have worked all their life, but then mm -hmm. they turn around and have to go back to work. Yep. They at Walmart, they at Home Depot. Be, and that shouldn't be. You shouldn't have worked for all these years and then have to turn around and go back to work because no one sat down with you 30 years ago and showed you how to have a plan in place, showed you how to have the right type of investment, show you how to have you know the things you need to put put away, and so that you can get to the point of retirement and say I'm I'm good. I can go travel. I can do all the things that I should be doing and not have to work for somebody else. Well, you know, you seem to be very passionate about what you say. Uh, uh, what, so why did you choose? Why did you chose to go into this type of service? Um, I didn't really choose to go into it. Um, one day. I was at um, at the mall, Owens Mills Mall, when Owens Mills Mall was was a mall, right? And um, I was there looking for a phone, and I shouldn't. And, and this is I know too that it, this is the um, area that I was supposed to be in, because I dropped my telephone in the toilet at work, right? And I called. And I was with T-Mobile at the time. I called T-Mobile. They was just like, "Okay, yeah, you can." I said, "You need to get another phone." They said, "You need to go to an actual store, not a kiosk, but go to the store, and, and you should be able to get a replacement phone." And I was like, "Okay, great." My lunch break at work. I run out, run out, of, run out of work. Run to Owens Mills. Run upstairs. Go to the kiosk. Now remember, they told me not to go to the kiosk, right? Mm -hmm. Run upstairs. Go to the kiosk, and they tell me, "No, you have to go to the store. Not not here, not the kiosk." I said, "That's what they told me on the phone. What am I even doing here?" So I come back down the escalator, trying to hurry up, 
in this little 30 minute lunch break I got, right? Come down the escalator and there's a gentleman standing at the bottom of the escalator. His name is Eugene Crawley. Eugene Crawley said, looked at me, he smiled. I smiled back. He said, excuse me, can I ask you a question? And I was like, yeah. He said, you keep your options open for making extra income? I was like, um, yeah. Now, mind you, this was November, right? So it was close to Christmas. I had two young kids. Yes, I keep my options open for making extra income. I need some extra income, right? So he gave me exchange phone numbers and he sat down with me and he um, explained to me what, what it is that they do. He invited me out to an orientation. I went to that orientation and I looked at it and I was just like, oh my God. I've never heard of this information. I never knew this information. Why am I, and at the time I was 38, 38 years old and I don't know this information? This is crazy. So how many other people that I know that don't know this information? So therefore I came aboard, I joined the business, I got licensed and I've been doing it ever since. I love what I do. Um, there's so many people out here that, like I said, need this information and still, there's still so many people. So I'm always looking for people to teach, to train, um, and help them get licensed so that they can help people, help the network of people that they know. So again, um, hold on, hold, 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 hold. Wanda, you just said something. Remember, I just mm -hmm. mentioned to you that people due to the pandemic, you know, they lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. And then you had some people who want to change their job. And then some people said they would never want to get caught up into a system, you know, a disaster like this just hit and don't want to be getting caught, you know, how would you say with your pants down sort of thing. And, right. and, and then you just mentioned something about the opportunity that you train mm -hmm. to teach people. So, wow. So can you explain a little bit about that? How, do, how does that work? Okay, sure. So the opportunity um, is to be, be who I am or be better than who I am really, right? So the opportunity is to come in, um, get your license. Um, the first license you will get is the um, insurance license. Um, once you pass your insurance license, the next license you will get is your investment license. And we train you, we um, take you out in the field. So we say a lot of things we're doing, we're doing it on Zoom now because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. but we're on Zoom and we, you know, you train you and you can train in any state. Once you get licensed in the state of Maryland, you can then get what we call your reciprocal license in any other state. So if you know people in North Carolina, if you know people in New York, if you know people wherever you know people, um, you want to go and you just go online and you um, request your paperwork to be appointed for that state. Now you have to pay that state's fee, but that's it. You never have to take another test. So once you pass this test in this, this state or whatever state that you live in, you never have to take another test. You okay. just have to get appointed in that state. And you help people, um, you, you train. So we, 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 we recruit, we train, and we build. Um, the, the idea is to build a business so that you can leave behind for your children. Whereas in a J-O-B, you know that you are working for somebody else and that, that'll never be yours. But here in this business, um, you are able to build it, you're able to grow it, um, and you take it. And when you decide, when you decide to retire, you can pass it down to your children. Hmm. Or you can retire, or you can sell it back to the company. When you say the job and, and, and what you do, you know, I know everybody has to put in work, but there, is there any limitations to you, the type of money or services you that that, nope, that your company provides? There is no limitations to what 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 we do. Um, and the, the good thing about it, being a woman, you know, we our company was actually named the best employee uh, employee for women. Because there is no, um, there is no, you know, you, you, I'll pay the woman this price and, and pay it the, um, a man this amount. Whereas in my cleaning business, I've seen that. But in the financial business, there is not, we, you get, um, once you come aboard, you get what we call a rep, a solution number. So, cause you are, we are the solution to people's problems, right? So we call mm -hmm. it's called a solution number. So you hit your solution number. And when you send up business, you put your solution number on that business, they're going to pay everybody the same. Whatever okay. your contract is, that's what they're going to pay you to according to your contract. So um, you can, yeah, there's no cap on what you can make. You, uh, there's people who, who said they come in, they just want to make $1,000 a month. There's people who come in and said, I want, no, I want to make $10,000 a month. There's people who make $200,000 a month. So there is, no, it, there is no cap on the income. It's about what you, what the work that you put in and, and that's how you get back, what you get paid. What about the people that say, well, how would you say, because I, I used to do a lot of businesses, and you have people kind of shy, withdrawn, 
and not, you know, maybe not too sure of themselves sometimes. Because mm -hmm. most people kind of fear stuff or, or, or uneasy with stuff because they fear, like you mentioned, licenses and stuff like that. Do you mm -hmm. do you assist them? How do they just come in there? So how how, how does that work? You know, do you come in? Well, how do, how, how y'all work that out when you're bringing people in? So we hold their hand. So for instance, if I recruited you today, right? Mm -hmm. Then I would sit, I would, once I recruit you, do your application and everything, then I would sit down with you and say, okay, David, this is what we're going to do. We're going to make call, phone calls together. Like pe most people, that's mm -hmm. the, the biggest fear is about making phone calls, right? But we make those phone calls together. If we make those calls or I'll sit down and I'll make the call for, I have a client, I'll have the person fill out that make a list. I'll call them saying, hey, this is Lila. Um, you know, David just joined my business and he's in the process of getting his license and he need help with his field training. So now that person say, okay, sure. I'll help him with his field training. So now that's your first appointment. You schedule, we schedule that appointment. You get on Zoom, they get on Zoom. And I'm I'm giving them the presentation. I'm doing all the talking. The new mm -hmm. person is just taking notes. They're just taking notes. They're learning. So they're learning everything I do. After the first three appointments, I say, okay, now the first part of the pre presentation, the first page of presentation, I want you to do the first page. You need it. You be like, oh, okay, no, you can do this. You did. Mm -hmm. And and it and it, it builds the person's confidence. So now they're doing the first page. The next time they're doing the first and the second page. And it's only five pages. So now once they get down those five pages, now they're like, okay, I, I think I, I think I got it. So now they're doing a presentation. They're learning and because they've sat and listened to me do appointments and listen to me close business. They are learning how to close business. We also do um, drill for skill classes at my office where they can jump on a Zoom on, on a Tuesday night and learn how to do drill for skill, meaning overcoming objections. So if somebody got an objection, they can learn how to overcome mm -hmm. that objection. So everything that they need to know to, to be successful, we got them. Because at the end of the day, if they're not successful, successful, I'm not successful. You know, this is this is my teammate. I need my teammates to be successful. I need them to be independent. I need them to go build a team and be able to be out there on their own. So everything that I'm giving them, I'm teaching them everything I know. And mm -hmm. once they got it, once they feel comfortable enough, then, then we let them go on their own. I remember my first time out on my own, right? The guy, Eugene Crawley, when he was training me, I remember we went on an appointment together. This is when we were doing appointments in person. I went on an appointment together and I'm doing a presentation and, and the person asked me something and he was like, and I went to look at him. He just, he turned his back on me because he, <laughs> he, knew, he knew I knew the answer, right? So mm -hmm. but he was still there, but he turned his back. And I closed that thing. And I was like, oh, I got this. And that's no. that. I need them to go me anymore. But that's, that's what we do. We say, okay, let me hold your hand. Let me teach you. Let me train you. The only thing I can't do for you is go take that test. That's the only thing. And But then even with the test, we got a coach in the office. We got somebody that a licensing coach. We got somebody that's going to walk them through it, help them with the online class. We have classes that they can go, mm. physical class that they can go to. So everything that they need to be successful in this business, we got them. And most people are just scared because well, it's out of the well, you, well, it sounds like to me, no more excuses. <laughs> y'all mm -hmm. kind of cover everything. So, mm -hmm. um, ladies and gentlemen, those who will be viewing this um, video or podcast, as some would call it, you know, you just heard Lila Arthur explain to you about the financial services. And I know a lot of you out there are, are trying to make some decisions today. And sometimes I used to say, you know, choose wisely. So, you know, you just heard from Ms. Austin, and she said they pretty much train you. The sky's the limit as far as the income is concerned. It's that you helping people and you helping yourself at the same time. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't, it don't get no better than that. And, uh, and, and I'm going to ask you one more question about the business. How mm -hmm. much time do you have to put in on the, on the services, you know? It depends on the person. So that's my, usually my first question to the person is like, how much time do you have to give me? And I base, we base what we do is based on what they tell me. So if a person's working a full-time job and they just want to work with us part-time and they say, oh, I can only do three days a week. Okay, so you're three days a week. You, that's when we're going to schedule your appointments on those three days that you're available. We're gonna, that's how we're going to schedule your training appointments. So it's right, you said there is no excuse. So wow. whatever, 
It's, no, no, no I'm just so saying that's, that, that's amazing because, like I say, so you can't even use that. I don't have the time, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you know, right. so you know, so it sounds like a great opportunity. And, uh, and, and, and if you don't know, is this? Like I say, a lot of us been through this pandemic, still going through it. A lot of people got financially hurt, and and some people were not able to come back. And a lot of people are, are deciding to make some choices today. And I mm -hmm. hope you choose wisely. Now, you just heard from Miss Lila that, you know, like I said, there's really no more excuses than what she does. And I encourage you to give her a call. It don't cost you anything to pick up the phone. And at the end of this presentation, you will, get, you will see how to get in touch with her. And Miss um, Lila Austin, I'm going to just say this to you. Now, and, and this I know, and I can vouch for this, ladies and gentlemen, this is a great young lady. She, that, like she said, she truly do care about helping people. That's what she does. And not only in, in her work, but she does it socially too with the hugs program. And other thing else she did, she like she said, she first thing she said, I'm a mother first. And you know, mothers look out for their flock, their children. <laughs> That's what mothers do. So you know, she has all the attributes of uh, of servitude, of helping people to help themselves. And, and, and you know, and then in the National Black Unity News, you know, we she is so welcome in there because I know, I know economic empowerment is one of the key to our survival, especially black folks, melanated people. Now we deal with everybody, but this what we focus on in the paper is us, we black mm -hmm. people. And uh and if we ever want to break these chains of bondage, we have to try something different, something new mm -hmm. that, that's gonna make a better way, not only for you. But for your children and your children's children, and, and, and again, and I can't find a better way because, like I say, there's no more excuses. That should, they they train you. The sky's the limit for the income. And and she said one key word, like I just said, children, children. You can even inherit the businesses to your children, to your family, to school, to your significant mm -hmm. other. And I mean, now how much power would that get? And not only that, you're getting the education and finances which we was not taught in school and, and everything else. So man, so it, it's a win, win, win situation. I don't care how you look at it. No more excuses. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call her, find out a little bit more information. She'll talk to you. I know she will. You call her, she's definitely gonna talk to you and, and share with you how you can help yourself and help your family. So Lila, uh, 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 in closing, you know, uh, I know, you know, and, and this is a short period of time, but any departing words you would just like shake it be about anything, you know, who you are, why you do, you know, anything else about your business or service, you know, you just go in and share. So one thing that came to mind is, you know, when I first started, I was I was scared too. Like, you know, and I know that's why a lot of people don't get involved because they feel like, oh, I can't do that. I can't, I can't do this. That's just not me. Well, I was the same way. It wasn't me. You know, I hadn't, I hadn't been in, in sales and I hadn't been in, I, you know, I worked at a desk. I did computer work. That's what I did for a living. I worked at, at a desk and I helped people with their computers. So it was like, oh, this is not me. But at the end of the day, if you continue to tell yourself that and you never move forward and try something different, and I, and I shouldn't even say try because a try is a cuss word in, our, in, my, in my business. We don't say try. But if you never do something different, you're going to continue to be in that same situation over and over again. And I am thankful that I actually took a look at the opportunity and I got involved because when I say eight months later, I had been with, with this business for eight months. Eight months later, I was out sick for two days. On that second day, I got a phone call from my human resources department told me I no longer had a job. Now, this company, I worked for six and a half years, came in on weekends, brought my kids with me to work. Whatever I needed to do to make sure the job was done, that's what I did. And they called me up on my cell phone and said I didn't have a job. Now, had I not had took advantage of this opportunity, I'd have been just out there not being able to feed my kids, not being able to have a roof over my head. But thank God I did take a look and I, I got involved and I was good. I was fine. I was, I didn't miss a beat financially. And I never worked for nobody else after that. That, that was that was a that was a telltale. Wow, wow. Never ever have I ever worked for anybody else after that. That's a powerful testimony. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen.
you know, like I said, we've we been running around, you know, we were saying, God help me, and, and, and I don't know what I'm going to do from here, and all of those type of things that you've been saying to yourself privately, publicly, but now you, you just heard a young lady, if, if she had not stepped up and had a step of faith and just trusted that there is something better, you do have to try something new if you want to make changes in your life. She offered you a, she, a hold your hand type of situation. There's no excuses for you to fail. Either. All you got to do is be a willing vessel and, mm -hmm. and, and do the things that they are willing, you know, what they teach you. You know, you just do the things that they teach you. And next thing you know, you teach others to do the same thing. And what better way of us helping us? This yes. is a powerful, I mean, I just look at it, it's just a powerful concept all the way around. And especially for us. Because, like I said, we keep working that 40 hours a week and, and this, that, and you know you can barely make it. Mm -hmm. yep. And, and, and Lila just mentioned, I don't, she said you only have a few days a week, a few hours a week, whatever your hours that they're willing to work with you on that so that you can work your way out of them jobs. Mm -hmm. and, and things like this. If you you so maybe a little nervous about doing this, but, you know, they got a plan that can assist you. But just, but guess what? That rainy day, the COVID you never thought was going to hit. They mm -hmm. got wars and rumors of wars going on. You got people in these other countries got uprooted. Yes. And, and don't say, well, you saw what happened last year at the Capitol. So don't say it won't happen to us. And so, but it's good to prepare to have that rainy day for because most of us don't have money to put nothing away just to pay our bills. Here it is. You got an opportunity. Uh, uh, and not only that, but the Bible says a good man leads an inheritance to his children, children. And they have that for you as well. To teach you that you can pass with the work that you put in, that you can pass it down to your family. Man, uh, uh, Miss Arthur, I appreciate you, you know, because, see, I know your heart is in the right place. And uh, and I know, see, you're not just talking to talk, talk. I know you for real. Your services for real is proven. It's a company that got great accreditation and everything else. So, you know, so it's, it's no more fear, no more excuses. And uh, and you can find Lila Arthur in the National Black Unity News. She's putting out great information. How you can contact her there. And she does quite a few other things. And like I said, at the end of this uh, presentation, you can get, see how to get in touch with her. With her. So, Miss Arthur, I appreciate you so much. Just for what you do, for your support in the publication as well, and you keep doing what you're doing, and um, much love and respect, and and thank you, and ladies and gentlemen, good night. Thank you. Thank you.